Hi. Um, I made a video yesterday for Peace Day, but unfortunately it uh, didn't come out completely. So I'm just, I just deleted it and I'm going to redo it to see maybe if this one is a little better. Basically, I just uh, wanted to read this story and then um, just kind of have a little meditation or something to manifest peace on earth. So let's start with the story. Um, I called it uh, Once Upon a Bible, and it's on the, the blog that I started. Uh, it goes like this. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a man named Abraham. Abraham talked to God. They would have lots of interesting conversations that people from all over the world would travel far and wide to hear. Abraham helped people talk to God, which is what made him special. One day, God said to Abraham that he would have as many children as there are stars in the sky. Well, said Abraham, I'd better get started. And he ran home to his wife Sarah with a big smile on his face. As the days turned to months, Sarah and Abraham still had no children. Polygamy being more common then, Sarah suggested that Abraham do it with her maid Hagar and see if anything happened. And it did. Hagar had a boy, and he was named Ishmael. That's one star. It would be about 13 years until Abraham would have another son. In the meantime, Abraham taught Ishmael everything he knew. They had a good father-son relationship. Hagar, on the other hand, wasn't so secure. You see, <clears throat> Sarah was still the favored wife and still had no children. Hagar wanted her out. She wanted to be sure that her son would inherit whatever it is they inherit back then. Sarah had to do something and quick. So she prayed and was guided to take herbs and tinctures and try different sexual positions. And lo and behold, she became pregnant and beautiful. And Abraham was pleased, for he had never tried positions like that before. Nine moons later, a son was born, and he was named Isaac. That's two stars. God then told Abraham about circumcision. Circumcision. So, at the age of 90, Abraham took a blade and cut his own foreskin. So much for every star in the sky. He then took the blade to Ishmael, who was only 13 years old. It took a little convincing, but Abraham said something about entering manhood, and so it was. Isaac was seven days old. One day, he would find himself on a sacrificial altar, with his father holding the blade, this time to his throat. That experience he would remember. This one, he wouldn't. It would take a few days for them to recover. Then one day, something terrible happened. To this day, no one really knows what it was. Sarah and Hagar fought over their son's birthright, but neither woman knew the true fate of those two brothers. You see, Ishmael would become the father of the Arab nation, and Isaac the father of the Israeli nation. The fate of these nations would determine the fate of the world for generations to come. It came to be that Hagar and Ishmael were cast into the desert with only enough food and water for three days. While this was enough to sustain them until they got to the tribe next door, Hagar was mad and would cry about the injustice done to her and her son. They got lost, ran out of food and water, and Hagar sent Ishmael away as she sat under a tree and perished. As for the brothers, all that was left to tell was their story of injustice and how sad it was for them to be separated. But they had one thing in common, their God. They would pray and know that they are one. But as the brothers passed on and the stories lived on, the love between brothers would be forgotten, and the nation of Ishmael and the nation of Isaac would grow and fight each other for generations. 
Over 4,000 years, the war would go on, neither side knowing or even remembering why the war was started in the first place. It had just become habit to fight and to hate. But one day, God returned to earth, and the two nations remembered that they are brothers, and they lay down their weapons and embraced in love and joy, and peace rippled around the world and across the universe, and it was good. So I told that little story on Peace Day, and um, I just kind of invited people to just imagine what it would be like if there was peace in the Middle East, if the Arabs and the Israelis or the Muslims and the Jews would just remember that they have more in common than not, and that they are brothers and family, and how joyous it would be if, if there was peace, like if both sides just lay down their weapons and just <clears throat> realize that all this fighting and hating isn't really getting anywhere. I mean, if they can do it, anyone could do it, right? So, so every thought that you think, every word that you say, has an effect on everything and everyone in the entire world, whether you realize it or not. So even though, while well, International Peace Day might mean ceasefire, you know, everyone lay down your weapons, there, there's more to peace than just nonviolence. It's a, a sense of inner peace. So I try and, and, and tap into that inner peace and, and think about peace in the Middle East or, or peace in Iraq, where everyone feels inner peace and just naturally lay their weapons down. So um, I invite you to do that. Um, I, I won't waste any more minutes. But uh, yeah, think about that once you uh, hit the stop button and see what happens. Because uh, you may not realize it, but those thoughts will matter. They do matter. And um, let's see what happens. Peace.